right. Uh, my name's my name's Keith Fisk. I work, I'm a database administrator, and I'm ATI. Um, I'll be talking about the various ways um, some open source operating systems manage uh, Postgres packages. I mostly did this talk as a way for me to really nail this down because each e each one of these does it wildly differently and puts places puts things in different places, so it's kind of hard to manage. So this talk is kind of a reference manual for myself as well. So Hopefully somebody else finds it useful as well. Um, just if you're curious, I, uh, OmniTI, we're a uh, consulting company. We do full stack support from down to the hardware all the way to the application front end for uh, very large traffic websites. Um, some of the clients that we have that possibly may have heard of. We also have a, a scalability conference every year down in uh, Washington, D.C. National Harbor um, in September. And as most other people doing talks here, we are hiring. DBAs and developers. So if you have any questions, let me know. So everybody is going to download Postgres. Everybody starts here. Well, that's where you should start. Let's go to the main website, and uh, there's a download link. Um, has binary packages, the source code, has live CD examples. Also has a bunch of different application suites that are available there. So you can check that out. I'll actually going to be. So these are all, if you see something orange in here, it's a live link, so you can click on it. So this is what the page will look like. So. Uh, I'm going to start with Debian. Uh, this is actually the latest, the latest Debian version, 8.4. Uh, so this is the way things are currently with the way Debian is released. So by default, uh, the, pack the package that comes with Debian, even 8.4, is really old. I think the default one is 9, I think it's 9.1. It's either 9.0 or 9.1 in Debian 8.4. So uh, definitely go to this URL, apps.postgresql.org. Very easy to remember. It redirects to the uh, wiki page that has the full instructions of how to actually set up uh, using the um, official app repo that um, the Postgres community provides. It has, uh, this one only keeps the current, currently supported packages available. When a package goes, uh, EO, when a version goes EOL, it is removed from this repository. So if you're doing this, it's good to keep as up to date as you possibly can. Um, these are the same repositories for both Debian and Ubuntu. Um, and they also have a lot of third party applications available in their um, app repository. PG Admin's one of them, PG Bounce Man. Um, extension that I wrote, I was actually surprised to find it was there. I learned that when I was writing this talk that they actually have PG Partman up in, uh, it's a partition manager up in this um, repository. So this is the, the scary part where I go do a live demo just so you can see that this thing, these things actually work. So they give you a, a handy little shell command here to uh, get the repo set up for you. Is it, everybody able to read that? So that just sets up the repository and apps. And then, oops, actually need one more thing. So you actually need the, these two packages, wget and CA certificates, are installed by default uh, with the installation. So, but they just throw it in there just to be sure. Um, this gets the, uh, the, um, the key for the repository so you know you're getting it from the real repository. And then you just install. Oops. Update the repo. And you'll see as the next slide I talk about is I'm actually going to be installing the 9.4 package just so for demonstration purposes later. But the main server package for Debian is actually has no name. It's just PostgreSQL 9.5. 9 if you just need the client, say you just have like a web server or something that you just like need to run PG Bouncer on or something like that, you can just install the client. You don't actually have to install the server as well. Um, the core contrib modules are their own package. All of the contrib modules are in one package. You don't have to go installing them one at a time. They're all kept together. Um, if you start need, need to compile anything, if you need to run make to like install PG Partman or install PG Bouncer or something like that, you will need the, the, the dev package. It's available there. Documentation is available. Um, the last two are unique for the way Debian manages things, and I'll get to that a little bit later. 
Um, you can actually run multiple versions and multiple, cop multiple clusters all at the same time on one box, and Debian has a really, really nice interface for doing that. That's all in the PostgreSQL common package. And libp the libpq library is actually its own uh, distinct package as well. So you just have to pick the main server package and It grabs everything, a bunch of other stuff for you as well. So you can see it grabbed the client package, it grabbed the common package, it grabbed the contrib package, and a couple other things, and libpq that it needed. So I will let that run in the background while I continue talking. So um, one of the things that's unique about that, the common package and libpq, those are actually, they're, they're not, they don't have versions in their name, but they're actually associated with whatever the latest version uh, package you have installed. So the common package is associated with 9.5, and the libpq is associated with whatever came out with 9.5. Um, we actually had a client that had a, it was a, it was a long time ago, but they kind of just came, made it a standard practice that they pin the version. So you can actually do that. It's something you can do with any app package. It's something in here. In the, you just make a file in this preferences.d folder. So you, we just call the Postgres, can call it whatever you want. And this actually pins all PostgreSQL files, or all PostgreSQL packages, libpq and libpq dev, and they have it pinned at 946 right now. So if there's an update to lib, if there's an update to 9, like right now the 9.5 packages are available in apt. If you did this without pinning, it would upgrade the libpq and the, lib, and the PostgreSQL common packages to assume that 9.5 is installed. So if there's any, weird compatibility problems with libpq and whatever your software is running and you need the 9.4 version, this pinning option is really handy. Uh, priority is, um, if you look into the way app manages packages, um, there's a priority system to tell it which ones you want to install in which order. Uh, when, you in, when you install it, these are the default directories. So for the default cluster, when, put, when um, I said back at the beginning, when you install the server package, um, Debian automatically sets up a default cluster for you and it starts it up and it's all up and running. Let's see if that's finished yet. Yep, it's finished. So you can see it actually went in here and made a cluster for you. Bunch of, bunch of uh, commands and stuff there. So it installed uh, 9.4, 9.5, but it also gives it a cluster name. Uh, the default cluster name in this case is main. Um, the config files like postgresql.com, pghba. In the Postgres default world, that's all in the data directory. In the Debian world, all config files are supposed to go in the Etsy directory, so it puts them in the Etsy PostgreSQL 9.5 and the, whatever the cluster name is. Binaries all go in a, in a major version folder. Um, shared, which is primarily where I, for me, is where extension files and stuff are located are in user share. And by default, logs actually go to the var log folder, and the log file name gives, gets the version number and the cluster name you're running with that log. So if you need to have logs somewhere else, you have to kind of manage that yourself. Uh, for automatic startup, there is a, in, inside the config directory back here, for each of the clusters, that's a folder right there, there's a file called pgconf, or called start.conf. That file only has one value in it. It's either auto, which is the default, and it will, will set it for you. That automatically stops and starts the system when the system boots up and shuts down. Manual uh, will allow using the uh, cluster management commands to, it won't start it when the server starts, but you can still use the cluster management commands to manage it. Um, and then you can set it to disabled. That only disables it for the cluster management commands. You can still use pgctl and start and stop your cluster, and it'll, it'll still work, but this just stops the cluster management from, from working. When you first set up uh, the default system, so this is, uh, it makes a PostgreSQL system user for you. It makes a role in the database called Postgres, so those two match. Um, the default pghba.conf is different from what the default Postgres one will do for you. Um, there's only, lo only local connections are set up, but uh, the local socket connections, um, it only allows local system socket connections where the username matches the role in the database and any other TCP connections are require a password. So I think this is probably one of the better defaults that it changes, because this is a much more secure default. So um, like I said, any other system access uh, remotely has to be set up manually. And this is another one uh, that's 
missed a lot by default. By default, only local TCP connections are allowed. So you have to go in here and uncomment this and either set it to start or let whatever in or set whatever IPs that you want. So this is the big difference with Debian from every other operating system that runs Postgres is it makes these wrapper scripts for you. So there's a, a wrapper called PG Create Cluster that's a replacement for initDB. Um, this automatically sets up the new instances. You just give it a name and it automatically makes a directory, picks a new port that's not in use and, and goes from there. So I'll actually go back here. I'm actually going to get 9.5 installed as well. To, actually, you can see PSQL. If you look at the version of PSQL right now, it's 9.4. As soon as I install 9.5, that will change. So, uh, there's a replacement for, uh, for the PGCTL command, which is PGCTL cluster that's made to work with the naming and pat convention and pattern that all the other wrappers are made to work with. They do have an upgrade cluster wrapper that I do not recommend using. I talked to quite a few people in the PostgreSQL IRC channel and on Slack now that it, if it works, it just works and it's fine. If there's any problems, it really obfuscates the problem because you, you don't tell it where anything is, you just tell it to run an upgrade. And if you didn't know where things were before, you still have no idea where they were and now things are even worse than they were before. So I recommend not using this upgrade cluster command unless you're really familiar with how PG upgrade works. Then it's safe to use because you know what it's doing on the back end. If you don't just use PG create cluster to make your new cluster, um, then you manually swap ports and stuff around and then you can use PG CTL and, and all that kind of stuff from there. LS clusters just shows all the clusters that are existing. Uh, there's a quick rename cluster and like I showed you before, PSQL is actually not the PSQL native binary. So you go PSQL version again, it's now, now actually 9.5.3. So see PG LS clusters, oops. You can see it actually made to, it made a 9.4 when I installed 9.4 and it made a 9.5 when I installed 9.5. So if I want to make a new one, there's a pretty uh, create cluster. You give it the major version you want to do, so 9.5 and just whatever name you want to give it. Oops, got to do that. Just, here you go. And it doesn't start the new one automatically there, so you can you can start it up yourself then using uh, sudo pg cluster using the same naming convention pattern db. Start is a good option. So now we have all, all three clusters started. They all got their own port, and they're all running, running happily along. Uh, you can, like, as, as you can see, it automatically upgrades. Whatever the latest version that, that you installed is, is the major version that everything's going to default to. You can actually manage this with the this is a system in Debian just used in general for all packages called update alternatives. Um, there's an option that Debian gives this command called get selections. You can actually get all the alternatives it's managing. Uh, Debian actually has this narrowed down into just these two um, things for, this is pretty much all of, most of the stuff is in this PSQL alternative. Um, and if you see, if you could do update alternatives with list and give it that name, it shows you that it has both 9.4 and 9.5 that it manages. Um, if you give it the display option here, you can see what actually manages quite a lot. All the documentation, shares, and everything is all managed through that one PSQL alternative. So if you need to go back to 9.4 as your default for whatever reason, you can use this to change your defaults. It's one of the things you, you really don't know about until you really deep, dig, dig, dig deeper into it, but it can make management of, of multiple versions at the same time a lot easier. So um, if you need to change it, you just give the update alternatives this config uh, par parameter and whatever alternative you want to manage. And you can see the options there. It gives you, but right now it's set to auto, so it'll automatically use whatever the latest, the latest version is, um, which is this, whatever, it goes by this priority, whichever is the highest number priority. They just happen to use the Postgres version numbers for the priority and it works out. 
Um, or you can go in there and pick which one you want to use. For PSQL, that'll change it to the other major version. System D, everybody's favorite new management software. So this actually makes these wrapper scripts harder to manage because when you start something with these wrapper scripts or PGCTL, System D is not aware of it. So if I actually go back in here and use this list units command here, clear this. Nope, it actually is aware of. Okay, that just put me in the butt. Maybe it figures it out after a while. Before it, it, it wasn't actually showing for me. It wasn't showing the new the new clusters I was initializing. It wasn't managing them for me. They weren't showing up there. I actually had to start it with System D for it to see it. I don't know if something changed in the what I was doing. The thing that's really confusing though is you can't tell it a different mode to stop in with System D. So if you need to stop, if you're less, if you're nine five and higher, you're fine. The default mode is fast. Most people don't want to. The old default was smart, so most people told it to do the stop fast, so it would disconnect all the sessions. If you just give it smart, it waits for all the connections to disconnect, which can sometimes be never. So if you try to start shut down with System D, you may never shut down, and then this database is kind of in this weird state. So if you need to start stop a different way, use PGCTL or the cluster management, but make sure you restart with System D if you need System D to manage your services. Um, just one of those new things you have to deal with now. So that was all the Debian stuff. Any questions about that? No. So I had, the latest version of CentOS is actually seven. Um, I actually haven't worked on seven at all. I don't have any clients that have it, so it's just not something I felt very familiar with, and CentOS 7 changes to using systemd as well. So I'm not familiar with all the idiosyncrasies there. So I just, I still have a lot of clients and a lot of people still run 6. So that's what I'm doing this demo with. 7 now uses systemd as well, so you have to be aware of things there. The thing with 6 is the default package is really old. It's still back on 8.4, so you really need to get the, um, the, the, the RPM repos. Uh, they have e pretty much everything is still available as an RPM. If you uh, go to their, their page, there's 9.6 is available, 9.5 for all these different flavors. And if you scroll all the way down, they're still doing EOL versions of 7.3 for old versions of, of Red Hat and stuff. So everything's still there for quite a lot. Um, each of the major versions needs its own uh, YUM repo. You don't just get one repository like in Debian. Each major version, you have to go in there and set that up. So I'll just do that here real quick. I have a CentOS VM running. So that was pretty painless. So their package naming convention is the opposite of Debian's. The one without the name is only the client. So if you just install the one without any uh, name on the end of it, you're only getting the client. If you need the server, then you have to tell it the server uh, one. But if you actually install the server, it does install the client and, and everything for you. It doesn't have its own distinct uh, libpq package. I think that's bundled in uh, de uh, development. Parts of it are in development, parts of it are in server. So whatever part you need, you just install that version of the package. So go back here. Um, install. So you see that this is the one I'm telling you to install a server, but then I also want the client and I also need the libraries. So it doesn't do the documentation for you automatically or the contrib modules. So if you need the contrib modules, you have to do that uh, manually yourself. Uh, set up this. This sets up the default. Um, there's no wrapper scripts in. in um, there's only there's no wrapper scripts in CentOS. Uh, the only thing that's really wrapped. It's just using the. It has some stuff built into the service command for initializing a default cluster. So you can do that. Uh, check config is for. That's what it uses to initialize. You want something to manage be managed by services and start and stop it automatically. You use the check config command. So if you want to set up our default instance, so the package installation in Red Hat does not set up an instance for you. 
you have to go in and set up an instance, even the, even the default one uh, by yourself. So do that here. There you go. Okay, it's now it's all system D related stuff now, or oh, okay. Okay, so there, yeah, there's new all the all kinds of new stuff and major version changes. So that installed, set up the initial cluster, turn turn the service on. Um, it, you can't actually start the service without turning check config on. So. Now the service is starting up, and now we have our happy little instance running. So if you need to create additional instances, then you just go back and use the default initDB uh, binary to put them wherever you need them. Um, that actually does create a pretty good default location for things. So the default data directory is var lib psql 9.5, and then a data, there's a data folder in there, and then your data directory is in that. So if you need to create additional data directories, you can just go make them right next to that, and it keeps it all in the 9.5 directory. You know they're 9.5 clusters. It's managed pretty well. Um, all the config files are in the data directory, the way the default Postgres works. It doesn't put them in Etsy. Um, the binaries are in this location, and they are most of them are not in your path. So PSQL is, but it's a special little snowflake. So like init DB is not in your path. So if you want to initialize a new cluster, you have to do you have to know the full path of where the binary is. So the, by default, the only cluster you can make when you don't know this is the one it comes with. So you have to figure out where all these it hides all the paths and stuff around. This is why I why I did this talk for myself as a reference and to to help other people with this bit of a headache. Um, libraries are the same way. Uh, the shared uh, actually that should that should be shared. There's a typo there. Um, the database logs are actually put in the PG log directory, but logging isn't turned on by default, so there will be no logs there. But if you go turn logging on, then that's where it goes. It doesn't put them in var log. And CentOS actually has its own special startup log that if the, the, the actual commands and errors and stuff when you start the cluster up, go to this log as far as the service commands, and then switch over to using the Postgres log if you have logging turned on. So. Default users and access, um, same as uh, Debian, Postgres system user, Postgres role. Um, the default hba.conf is a little bit different. It actually has ident set. For local socket commands, that's pretty much the same as trust. Oh, I'm not, sorry, not trust. Uh, it's the same as peer. So you hit, it's the local system users have to match a database role. Um, but for uh, TCP connections, it uh, will try and connect to an ident server if one exists. And if not, it'll fall back to trying to match the role with the role in the database. So it ends up kind of being not the, not the same as Debian, but um, you actually uh, don't need a password by default uh, for TCP connections. Um, everything else is set up manually. And again, listen address is set to localhost by default and commented out. So if you want anything external to connect, you have to change that and restart the cluster. Uh, managing default versions. Uh, CentOS, Red Hat has update alternatives as well. Um, it doesn't have the nice get selections command that Debian does, so I had to hunt around and find out where the alternatives are and what are managed. It's actually in this directory. It's a var lib alternatives. That does not exist on Debian, so this is completely different. Uh, but you can see that CentOS actually separates everything out into its own distinct alternative that you have to manage. So you can actually have pgdump on 9.4 and psql on 9.5. You can have all these mixed up, which can be very confusing if you don't let the system manage it for you. But the possibility is there for that. So you can remember when I did the, uh, the, the display command over on Debian, it had that huge long list of things that it was managing. You can see here on CentOS, the PSQL is just managing PSQL. That's it. You can see that what the priority is there. So there's, this is, has both 9.4 and 9.5 installed. So, um, and it doesn't tell you here, actually it does, uh, tells you best, best version is right there and the status is set to auto. Um, if you actually need to change this, you, you still use the config command, but it doesn't give you the option for automa automatic configuration in the config command. You have to use the auto command. 
to set that for, for CentOS. But it basically works the same. There's the, the whole priority system of the packages, and whichever is the highest priority is the version of that alternative that's going to run. So. Uh, as far as service management, so before 9.0, um, by default, you could only ever have one cluster installed. That was all it would support. Um, the binaries all went into the same uh, folder location. You can see back here. Uh, so the binaries actually went into a major version file, a major version folder. Before 9.0, that's not the case. They all go into user bin. So if you install the new major version, you overwrit, overwrote what your major, or major binaries were before. Starting with 9.0, now they all go in their own uh, thing, but you can still, by default, only manage one cluster via services per major version. So it makes upgrades easier, but if you need to run multiple clusters, it's a little bit more of a challenge. So in the initd folder, um, again, systemd changes all of this stuff, but in uh, CentOS 6 and older, there's a one uh, initd file per major version. Easiest thing, just go make a copy of it. Put a, put a different, like put it like uh, PostgreSQL 9.5, server one, server two, give it a creative name. Um, because inside there then, it actually uses that, the name of the file, so it gets the name of the file here, and uses that to make the lock file and the PID file. So it makes, makes that easier to manage. And then you can set whatever you want the, the PG data directory to be. Uh, the PG log is for the, the, that startup log I was telling you about. Um, these engine and, and, you can, and you can set the port and stuff here too. These engine major version, PG version, you don't really ever have to change those. Those kind of just kind of come along, but I, wrote, I put them there so you can see where it's, where it's getting these uh, macros to fill in. The thing you have to be careful of is in this service file, a little bit farther down, is an override section. So if somebody puts files in this Etsy sysconfig pgsql location, it will override whatever you've put back into this made in it D cluster, uh, in it D um, file. So by default, there's nothing there. But a lot of configuration management software and a lot of people, that this is like a standard way of managing services on CentOS is to use these um, local sysconfig files. So a lot of people override the PG data and the PG port option in these alternative files, and then below this override section, it then exports those values again. So just something to be careful of. Um, if, if like you're changing these files and something else is overriding it, there's this other thing. So for me, um, it, it, I just do what the client's been doing before. If they're, if they're not using those overrides, I don't use the overrides. If they're already using the overrides, then I use the overrides. So just be consistent with whatever you're doing is, is the easiest thing to do with that. But then once, um, once you have the new in, init D thing in there, again, you run the check config to turn it on, and then CentOS manages the startup and stop, stop for you automatically. So any questions about CentOS or? Uh, I haven't actually run this on any clients myself yet. Uh, this is just me. I changed to using FreeBSD for my home server myself about a year or so ago. So I've been trying to learn how to use PostgreSQL on FreeBSD. Um, so FreeBSD is a little bit different. It does have repositories, but it's kind of got two major ones. You either have the, the, the package uh, repository, the default package, uh, package command, which is basically the same as what Debian and, uh, and CentOS were, but it also has the port system, which is uh, like Gen2. It compiles your, all your packages for you using a, a managed um, source repository. Um, generally, are both both are kept up to date, but ports is usually ahead of packages. And I can I don't know if I'll get to checking it now, but as of yesterday, uh, packages still only had 9.5.2, but ports has 9.5.3. So, port packages is running a little bit behind here. But e either way you install these, it ends up being managed the same way. So whichever one you go with, it doesn't matter. In the end, for the way you manage it running. Um, there's only three, three really major packages as far as they're concerned. These all have a name to them. There's no one that's just PostgreSQL 9.5. There's the server one, the client one, the contrib one, and the docs one. If you install the server one, it installs the client one for you. Um, the contrib is not installed by default. So, Let's see. 
So the way FreeBSD manages services is mainly through this, this uh, um, configuration file here, uh, oops, etsy.rc.com. And when, when you install, here I can go up here and uh, They see it's grabbing the client uh, option for you. So it's still on 9.5.2. Dan, still on 9.5.2. <laughs> so um, if it does a little pause there for you to make sure you re this is really what you want to do in case you're running the. Okay, I guess we have to update, run a fetch. Okay, so um, it did this little pause up here. To make sure, so you can see it's even still got examples back from 8.3 that you really want to do this upgrade. So it's giving you a little pause there to make sure that you're doing a backup before you do this. Um, so, but then uh, it doesn't install any uh, clusters by default or set anything up for you. It gives you instructions here for what you need to do. So uh, there's a thing for initializing it and starting it up. And then if you actually want PostgreSQL to run its startup, you use, uh, for most, like most services, you use this rc.conf file. And you do PostgreSQL enable equals yes. And then it will start it up for you. Uh, like I said in there, that'll initialize a cluster for you. So Oh, so yeah, it won't let you initialize a cluster until you actually go in the rc.conf and add that there. Um, I'll do that if we really need to. Don't need to right now. Oh, one init D? Yeah, so like a one off. So what's that? So just if I have to init D and do this one, it's not going to initiate the whole of the main all the main thing. Oh, on. Like that? Yeah, it's working. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I learned something now. Okay. Mainly it's stop. It allows you to override what's in that two bucket. Okay. All right. Do one start. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Uh, so one thing here, by default, it's going to syslog for logging. So I'll get to that on the on the next page. Um, so the service command, you can actually send it uh, parameters like mfast for stopping if you need to do not uh, something other than the smart stopper stopper start. So that works really well. Uh, file locations. Um, it, everything in most most everything that's not a system package, everything goes into user local. So um, it puts uh, user local package, and it just does a PG data, it just does a data folder. It has no major version. So FreeBSD does not manage major right now. Does not manage uh, multiple major versions at the same time. So um, all the bin files are in here. Local bin is in your default path. So PSQL and NetDB, all those files are going to be in your default path when you install everything. Um, and like I said, uh, sys, uh, by default, it's, and this is a PostgreSQL default too, it's not FreeBSD doing this. The default logging in Postgres is syslog. Um, I recommend changing it to uh, std error, mostly because syslog is not turned on by default in FreeBSD, so there will be no logging, even if you turn PostgreSQL logging on, unless you also turn syslog on. So, but honestly, it's easier to just change it to uh, the, the standard std error or data direct, uh, option for logging, and then just it'll log to pglog in the data directory. Um, default users and access. Uh, it's different than the other ones. It's actually pgsql, which means that the default role made in the database is pgsql. It's whatever, whatever s system role makes the cluster is the default role that gets made in the database. So the default system user for Postgres and, and FreeBSD is pgsql. So the default role that gets made is PGSQL, but the default database is still Postgres. So you have to tell it you want to log into the Postgres database when you try to log in. Um, this is actually the default from the PostgreSQL source. Um, everything is trust, so all local system users can log in. 
and uh, via, via socket or TCP, but only local system users can log in. Um, everything else has to be set up manually, and again, the listen address is set to local only. So, as I said, um, multiple minor, so the other operating systems, you can't have multiple minor versions all installed at the same time. This one, you can't have multiple major versions at the same time right now, which is what I guess you said you're, you're going to try to work on. So, um, so right now, the only way to do a major version upgrade is to do a PG dump, shut down your system, install the new packages, which will remove the old ones and install the new ones, and then do a PG restore. So right now, um, if you need to do this on a, high, like a higher availability system, it's honestly easier to just install from source, which I'll get to in a little bit. And actually isn't very hard at all. Okay. Right, actually there's a, I'm sorry, I, uh, I didn't have that. I, get, I actually have that uh, a little bit later. I mentioned the jails thing, so yep. Uh, so um, if, you're using the, if you're using the packages, I actually recommend not using that init DB that it comes with um, for the services part. Just do the init DB yourself and give it a location with, uh, with um, the data directory with the major version that you want. Um, if you want to have uh, ser uh, services manage it for you automatically, there's this file that comes in the in the it's in the ports package, but it's basically in the in the um, it's a file that talks about these options you can actually put in the rc.conf file to tell the service management where the data directory is, what default flags you want to give to initdb and pgctl and all that kind of stuff and uh, stuff like that. But this still does not support multiple clusters. This is, you can't you can only put these options in the rc.conf once, and that's it. So. If you want to run multiple instances, I found the easiest way to do that is similar to CentOS, and it's actually easier than CentOS, is in the uh, default PostgreSQL rc uh, d uh, PostgreSQL init file. There's this line that's, uh, this is basically trying to get the value from the rc.conf file. You can just replace it with your own data directory, and then services manages it for you. So if you make multiple ones of these in the uh, that's the RCD uh, folder. It'll start up all those clusters and stop them all for you, and they all just work like a normal service. That seemed to work pretty well for me. And this is the link here um, that I found. I haven't done a lot of that with jails yet myself, so this is why I just provided it as a link. So if you're familiar with running jails, um, this is actually another another way you can run multiple clusters on, on FreeBSD is to run each cluster in its, in its own jail. Any questions about FreeBSD? So if none of all, if all of those don't work for you, there's always compile from source. And this is honestly the, one of the easiest projects I've ever managed compiling from source um, by far. Um, for Debian, um, these, uh, with a default build, this, these are the only three packages you need to, to compile Postgres. Um, build Essential gives you all the, the, the make and C, uh, C headers and all that kind of stuff. Um, PostgreSQL needs a lib read line dev and zlib dev for compiling. And that's it. And you can compile Postgres yourself on Debian without any issues. Um, CentOS has a similar thing to Build Essential. Um, it's a group install called Development Tools that'll get you all the compilers and all that kind of stuff. And again, it needs the read line development and a zlib development library. Uh, FreeBSD, only thing I had to install was gmake because it needs uh, GNU make to install. It actually had all of, the, all of the build tools and stuff all come with FreeBSD by default. So you just have to give it the, the make that um, uh, Postgres is expecting. Um, if you're actually building this from the Git repo, and it, when, you, when you run the configure on the, the source file, it actually gives you these warnings that if, um, if you're doing this, if you're downloaded the Git repo, um, you actually need the Bison and Flex packages, not the development packages, the actual like binaries, bias and the flex to compile things properly from the git repo. The source uh, binary uh, zip file has all that taken care of for you. So, but it gives you warnings about it and it'll stop if it actually needs them. So, uh, com some compile options. Um, 
there's a there's a ton of them there if you go look them up. Um, but basically, for, there's some basic security ones. I would ever no, never recommend compiling PostgreSQL without OpenSSL because it's I don't know of a reason why you wouldn't want to have that. But it also has some other ones available if you're doing LDAP and PAM authentication. You have to tell that you actually want that in your in your end result. Um, for the built-in languages. Um, like Perl and Python and TCL, which is the only three that are like that, you actually have to tell it at compile time that you want those. Um, all the other languages are kind of third-party support you can install later, but the ones that come with are part of core Postgres, you need to uh, flag that at compile time. And if you're doing any kind of development on Postgres, which is, uh, I highly recommend compiling it yourself if you're doing development, um, you can turn on the debug and the uh, assert uh, compile options that this assert kind of like has some like extra checks that run when po when Postgres is running and doing things it has some extra things that Postgres does self checks on it don't recommend turning that on in production but for development it's it's really good to turn it on because you can you can core dump Postgres if a f assertion fails so that you don't kind of kind of don't want that on production but it's really it's really helpful in development and uh, instead of trying to compile all the contrib modules individually if you're doing source compile. Um, uh, it actually has this really handy flag for make called make world that will actually make not all, but the majority of the contrib modules like uh, PG contrib, DB, uh, PG crypto, um, DB link, uh, all, all, uh, a lot of the more common, commonly used ones. I know one of the ones it doesn't uh, compile is uh, UUID OSSP for, uh, for reasons that are given in the documentation and I think there's a couple others that it doesn't compile. And the reasons are given in the documentation for why. Um, and then, when you, if you want to actually install the uh, all the uh, contrib module files into the re the, de the resulting destination, you give make uh, install dash world, and it puts them all there for you. So, so every time I install from source, I always just do that just to have all of them there, even if I don't know if I'm going to need them. It's just a really easy thing to do. Uh, as far as service, uh, there are some service scripts that it comes with uh, that are in the source file. It provides one for a generic Linux one, not systemd. I think it's the old TIS5 one, a FreeBSD one, and an OSX one. I think the, I think the better way to, to kind of get those, though, is to install the package somewhere and get the service script from that and use that, because those are kind of kept up to date a little bit more than these are. I actually kind of had some problems with the FreeBSD one. I just gave up and just used the package provided one. Um, the, other, the big thing when you're compiling from source is you have to decide where all these binaries are going to go. Uh, so for me, I've kind of come use this uh, standard. I install it in opt with uh, pgsql. And you can go all the way, like you can have like, like right now it'd be 953. You can put 953 there. But the thing with doing that is all of your, like the share folder where you install all the extensions to, if you do, if you install the binaries down to the minor version, you have to reinstall the extensions every single time you install a new patch. Otherwise, things will still run, but if it requires a C library, it may not run, or if you like reload the database, your extension files and stuff won't be there anymore. So honestly, it's just easier to do like op, like do prefix op pgsql 9.5. Then every time you do a new minor, patch compile, it puts them all in the same location and things are, things are happy. And then for man to make management easier is to just do a sim link from that major version folder to a generic PSQL folder. And then you can just have uh, your path set to that and every time you do an upgrade, you never have to worry about, you just have to change the sim link and everything just works. And it works really well. Uh, the only other thing I would recommend is for when you make a data directory, just like the pack, just like uh, Debian and CentOS did, it made a, uh, a, a, a major version number for the data directory. So I'd recommend doing the same thing, but don't make the major version number the actual mount point. So I gave an example. I run, I run uh, free, like I said, I run free of BSD. So my mount point is actually just uh, PG data. And then within that folder, or within that mount point, I actually make the major versions as a folder. That allows PG upgrade with the, the hard link option to work. So you can actually do really, really fast PG upgrades. You can upgrade a one point, I did a 1.3 terabyte database in less than a minute with PG upgrade with using the link option. So um, you can't use the link option if the, 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 the old data directory and new data directory are on different mount points. 
So something to consider. That's it. Um, just some handy links for things from PostgreSQL in the PostgreSQL world that I use a lot. Uh, if you, a lot. A lot of the news and stuff comes across the Planet PostgreSQL feed. It's a really good feed to uh, follow. I post all my extensions that I write up on PGXN. So you're looking for extensions. It's a good place to check out. And there's a bunch of stuff about me. Any questions? All right, thank you.